Hi there again. So before moving to the to the tutorials now of this Model 6, let's address the final lecture now about boundary and initial conditions. Okay, so let me go here. So remember that uh, we're solving now an initial boundary value problem, which means that you need to give boundary conditions and initial conditions. Otherwise, you cannot start iterating okay so when it comes to boundary conditions and probably you know that it can be a little bit confusing and open from because there are many options but as i said in in, in the few in the first tutorial you think about that about dd slash newman and robin condition that's all okay think about the mathematical type and then try to find the conditions the numerical one in open from that probably best fit what you want to do that being said there are just a few of them that you will need to use okay then you are many variants that most of the time you you need to use uh something important that to define boundary conditions okay you need to find the location of the boundary condition in the domain so you need to have that patch available and we studied that in the machine in during the machine lectures okay you need to determine the boundary type or the and give the numerical value okay the boundary type is the one that you are let's say you are going to give in constant polymesh boundary and the physical value numerical value you are going to give it in in the folder zero where you have boundary initial conditions okay so just to give you an illustration that this is just I think I hope it's clear for you that you have a domain it's still the cylinder case so you will need when you do your domain remember that you need to extract these surfaces because if you have a single surface you cannot set those boundary conditions okay so you extract them you divide that in different surfaces and then you can assign boundary conditions here 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 and also your initial conditions okay also initial conditions you have different types so you can have uniform values and non-uniform values and we saw the influence of non-uniform values now and during the, the the first week in the cylinder case that if you put a non-uniform value you can uh, accelerate the convergence rate because you can you are adding a perturbation to your solution okay so for non-uniform initial conditions the value used can be obtained for another simulation potential solver experimental results mathematical, mathematical function or reduce order models okay or there are many more methods this is the most common ones okay uh, and as for boundary conditions, you need to know the location, okay, where you want to, to put those boundary conditions. Because not necessarily will be uniform in all the domain. You can, you can have in one region one value and in the other another value. Uh, also, let me talk about inlets and outlets boundary conditions. So these are the slash, but also can be Newman at the outlet. So inlets are, are for regions where the inflow is expected. Okay. However, inlets might also support outflow when a velocity profile is specified. Okay. Uh, pressure boundary conditions do not allow outflow at the, at the inlets. Okay. If so you put up pressure. So this is a big, big difference. So because you can have as an inlet boundary condition pressure or mass flow is you have this okay you cannot allow for outflow but as you put velocity prof, uh, velocity you you can do it okay so that depends what you are doing it depends on what you are doing uh usually velocity specified inlets are intended for incompressible soft flow so velocity and mass flow but if you are working with compressible it's recommended to use pressure or a mass flow. Okay, it's just a, an advice. It's not absolutely necessary. Regarding zero gradient or Newman boundary conditions, so zero gradient is just extrapolation. Okay, okay. So zero gradient and backflow. Okay, so zero gradient is just extrapolation. Imagine here that you are at the outlet. So basically, what you are doing when the flow is going out is just the value of the cell next to this to this boundary. That's all. Okay. So they require no no information. So you might be tempted to put this zero gradient all around. Okay. So be careful. At least you need to have one dd slash value because if you put everything zero gradient, your system is not is not consistent. Now what you are assembling. Okay, so one, at least you need one one dd slash. So basically, you can have this one, but this one it will give you problems at outlets. You have stuff like this, like vortices, because you can have flow 
coming back to your domain. So that can give you problems. So for, to deal with that, there is a specific one called backflow. Okay, so you can use zero gradient with no problem, but it's better to use this treatment. So when you use backflow, and in this case that you have flow coming back into your domain, basically what it's doing is blocking the flow and just let it go out, okay? So there is no more flow entering in the domain. So just to show you the difference between using a zero, uh, a zero gradient <coughs> Uh, uh, zero gradient uh, using fixing the oh, oh sorry zero gradient and fi here we have zero gradient and here we fix the value okay so this is important when it comes to pressure you need to fix the value at the outlet so see that you have this different and see that this is oscillating but because you have a zero gradient that basically you are extrapolating the value it cannot fix the reference pressure at the outlet so you have this oscillation so at outlet pressure please fix the pressure and what is interesting that is you monitor the solution you will see that you are going to get a converged solution in both cases so see boundary condition one and two that represented the fixed value of pressure and zero gradient so you get a solution that they are the same but when you visualize the solution you are going to get this behavior which might be dangerous because at one point your solution might diverge or in this case it's convergent because it's not a, a severe physics but in cases that you have very severe physics it, it might diverge give you problems so be careful with the with the pressure boundary condition at the outlet you need to fix it then talking about symmetry boundary conditions okay symmetry okay uh it's something that in reality you don't have symmetry now when you have your fl flowing and uh, solving industrial flows with turbulence this symmetry doesn't exist, but this is another trick that we use in CFD just to reduce the cell count, okay? So for instance, you have this domain and see that this is a win and you put one win here, you put a symmetry and that's all, okay? But be careful because if you're putting here symmetry, you are suppressing an instability mode in this direction. So it might happen that you can have an instability here in this direction, but if you put symmetry, you suppress that. But this is something that you you need to evaluate it's up to you okay but what is important about symmetry that symmetry is is, is equivalent to a slit wall so let's say that in this case you want to do a simulation like this you have inflow outflow and then top and bottom you want to say that these are slit walls walls with no boundary layer so you can put slit walls but also you can put symmetry the main difference is that symmetry you can only use it with planar faces instead a slit wall you can have non-planar face faces okay uh, so answer as well regarding this case, so see that you're putting slit walls and you have to be careful because also you can put outflow, okay? And it's a perfect valid domain, outflow, 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 inflow. However, in this case, is this, this kind of, of setup is difficult to make converge, okay? Or those convert, can converge easily if you have very large domains. But if you have a domain like this that you have a fi finite distance, a small domain, if you put outflow, it's difficult to make it converge because it might happen that you are going to have flow entering here, okay? Because the outflow will let you also, will, le will let flow to enter. So be careful with that outflow. What, what, what you can do is you use the backflow boundary condition and then you block that flow, okay? But if you put zero gradient, it might happen that you have flow coming back into the domain and that can can give you problems, can can, can, can make your, your convergence slower. Then location of outlets, okay? You need to put it as far as possible of the bodies, okay? So it's here you have this example, as you put it here, you have possible backflow, maybe, okay, this would be better. Then domain of the dimensions. So, so many people ask, okay, how how big or how small should be my domain? So if you don't have dimensions of your domain are not known, you can use these guidelines. There are many cases where those dimensions are known. For instance, you are doing internal flows, pipes, you know the dimensions of the pipe, there is nothing to do there. You need to use those, those dimensions. But if you have external hydrodynamic, usually those dimensions are not known unless you are solving a, a a wind tunnel and you have the test section and you want to reproduce that but if you have let's say uh, external aerodynamics outside open in the air in your <coughs> in the atmosphere you know those the, the, those values so usually you the, the the guideline is to have very large domain but that can be expensive so you can use these guidelines okay so this is a reference you know, roughly speaking that in our 
experience they work fine so you get a, a reference dimension in this case will be the wing core and you say five five times the length the reference length from 15 times to the back and five times top bottom and to the side okay this is okay however it might happen that this is not enough if this is not enough it's giving you problems you multiply by two this so it will be 10 30 and that start to become large or right? if you still you are having problems multiply by three Okay, so ideally, the larger the, the bounding box is, the better, the better. Uh, what you should check when you do this is that at the boundaries, you shouldn't have significant gradients. Okay, so if you put a boundary and you see that here you have the pressure gradient that is interacting with this, with this boundary, that is not okay. So that, that's what you check, that you don't have pressure gradients at that boundaries because that can act some problems. So these guidelines most of the time work fine, but it's up to you. You always need, need, need to check that. So here you, we give some, some considerations, okay? So the best advice is just to choose physically realistic boundary conditions, okay? So your solution will depend about those boundary conditions. So if you put a crazy value there, it's likely that it's going to diverge or maybe you are going to converge to the wrong solution, okay? Also regarding initial conditions, again, use physically realistic values, values that are as close as possible as your final solution so you can improve your convergence rate. We know that we don't know the final solution a priori, but I show you know in, in tutorial one a few tricks to accelerate the convergence that you can use. So those are the most important now considerations. Also now remember about backward flow that is important to do this treatment because if you have backward flow that can add some, some, some instabilities. Again, some other guidelines that you can read later. And talking about, in particular, boundary conditions in OpenFOAM, because you know that there are many of them. So, so far we have addressed this, and I will just re reiterate in here that you have base type boundary conditions that you set in the file constant polymesh boundary. You set this base type. And then the numerical type you set in zero folder so you have u p k omega t whatever you are solving you set the numerical so here you give the numerical value okay the velocity or the value of pressure whatever and here you are going to set the base type it is a patch it is a wall it is empty it is symmetry and you set the name also okay so just to remind you that you have these constraint patches Okay, so you have base type and numerical type. So when you are using these constraints, they are exactly the same in all the files. Okay, so you have this one. So most of the time you are going to use NT, C, and symmetry. Then you have the other addition as a, I'm not going to talk about that, but most of the time NT and symmetry, well, processor is when running in parallel and it's done automatically by the solver, okay? But then when it comes to, to the to patch that you put here as a base type, you can take any of these numerical value. And here's where things get, get crazy in open. And again, my advice, do not go and look at all those boundary conditions because it can be very, very confusing. So here you have this list, and probably this is the list of the most common ones that you are going to use. So you see that here you have zero gradient and fixed value, okay? Then you have the calculated, this one that you can program, this is one that you can use for turbulence model, but do, do not get, get lost in all those boundary conditions. These are probably the most common ones that you are going, going to use. Then you have the wall, these are for walls, okay? So this is important, okay? for turbulence model, okay? You are only going to compute Y plus if you define that as a wall. If you define that as a patch or whatever, you are not going to compute Y plus there. You are not going to use wall functions there. So you put it as a wall and then the numerical type in U and P is like this, okay? Then for the backflow at outlets, this is how you do the treatment. So you can use the zero gradient, that is no problem. But if you want to do the proper one, is like this. It will be a patch in boundary, and then you have this type, inlet outlet. And then you put inlet value and value. This is a dummy value for, for part of you. This inlet value is the value that you will put if the flow is coming back. So basically, you always say that block the flow. If it is coming back into the domain, block it. Or you can give another value. You can say here 10, 0, 0. So push the flow away with the velocity of 10 or whatever. Okay, but this is the standard treatment that you do. So typical boundary conditions are follow. So here you give you some combinations, boundary conditions. 
for external aerodynamics, but also they may work with internal flows. So at inlet phase, pressure puts zero gradient, but velocity fixed value, and turbulence value, also you fix these values. At outlet, you put it like this and see that turbulence fields and velocity, you use the inlet outlet, okay? Then fix your pressure value, always remember to fix. At walls, pressure, zero gradient, extrapolation, velocity, you fix the value of zero, 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 or if the wall is moving, you put that velocity. Remember that you can have moving bodies. And turbulence quantity, you have wall functions that this is another subject, advanced subject that we're going to talk later. If you have symmetry, all over the files will be symmetry, symmetry. If you have cyclic, which is periodic boundary conditions, is you have anti for 2D like this, and if you have a slip, it's like this, okay? A slip will be like equivalent to symmetry, but you can use it for non-planar phases. So you can put a slip, and this is a patch in boundary when you use a slip. And when it comes to boundary uh, wall functions, these are the combinations of wall functions. So don't worry, we in the advanced models we are going to address this, but this is how you have your, your classical combinations. Also remember the name of the patches needs to be the same in constant polymesh boundary and in the, in the numerical type, you know, in zero folder. So also you might have, I know, T, rho, uh, alpha, k, omega, you always use the same name all over the, the boundary conditions. Uh, if you are curious to know all the boundary conditions implemented in open phone here you have the source code okay regarding wall functions you have the source code here location if you want to look for information this is how you do it i invite you just to surf to browse the 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 documentation the source code and the documentation and remember that you can also use phone info to look for information for boundary conditions so you can put phone info in the outlet or phone info excellent wall function and it will give you information. And finally, just to remind you that in this, let's say in this generated hypothetical case, see that in the boundary file, okay, we're given this name like this. These are the names, and this is the base type in blue. NT, patch, patch, wall, okay. So then when you go into your numerical type, boundary conditions, in this case for U and P, this is like how you say. So the blue one represents the base type in boundary. So a patch can be many things. So in this case, it is a fixed value, value uniform. And see that you are using the same name. Anti, it is, okay, this should be wall, sorry here, this is a mistake. A wall, wall, and wall. See that you have this thought that you find in this slide. And anti is the same all over the faces. And the same will be for here, for pressure. See that a patch, zero gradient, anti, 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 anti. So be careful that you need to have, no, you, you have, you need to have this matching between base type and numerical type, and also use the same name all over the files. Okay, that was all for boundary conditions, initial conditions, and in the next video, we move to the actual tutorials. We're going to, to put in practice all these things that I show you in this lecture. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.